के दिन आशूरता जैन पे आया है कयाम बन के दिन आशूर का जैन पे के दर में आ हजारों के दर में आ जहरा का जा है कया जहरा की आती थी उठो गाजी सहारा दो सदा जहरा की आती थी उठो सहारा दो मेरे बेटे ने तन हलाशाए अकबर उठाया है मेरे बेटे ने तन हलाशाए बर उठाया है कयाम बन के दिन आशूर का जैन पे आया है सखी तमाचे शे मृने मारे सकी नारोई है शायद तमाचे शे मृने मारे थर थराया है कयाम बन के दिन आशूर का जैन पे आया है कहाँ कुमार के तरफ जाए कहा ढूंढे अली अस कुमार के तरफ जाए अंधेरी रात है बेशीर ने जंगल बन 
बसाया है कयामत बन के दिन आशूर का जैना पे आया है सोना सरे लाश पिसर शबीर कहते थे सोना कर बर सरे लाश पिसर शबीर कहते थे उठो अक बर मदीने जाओ सोगरा ने बुलाया है कया बन के दिन शूर का जैना पे आया है हजारों कातिलों के दर में हजारों कातिलों के दर जाया है कया बन के दिन आशूर का जैना पे आया है सल बेटियाँ सहारा की कुफे का नगर लोगो है बेटियाँ सहारा की कुफे का नगर लोगो चादर की जगह सर पर चादर की जगह सर पर है खा के सफर लोगो हैं बेटियाँ जहरा की कुफे का नगर लोगो कल उम्मत अहमद ने दरवाजा जलाया था दरवाजा जलाया था जहरा पे गिराया था अब लूटा है उम्मत ने अब लूटा है उमत ने फिर आज वो घर लोगों हैं बेटियाँ जहरा की कुफे का नगर लोगो जो तो में झकड़ा है शबीर का बेटा है शबीर का बेटा है बीमार है तनहा है वो किस तरह काटेगा वो के 
तरह काटेगा तनहा सफर लोगो हैं बेटिया जहरा की कूफे का नगर लोगो एक बची अति माँ है और नाम सकीना है नाम की गोदी है ना बाप का सीना है इस बची का अब होगा इस बची का अब होगा जिंदान में घर लोगो हैं बेटिया जहरा की कूफे का नगर लोगो सादात है ये इन पर सद का तो नहीं फेंको ये फूल है जहरा के पत्थर तो नहीं मारो क्या तुमको नहीं कुछ भी क्या तुम को नहीं कुछ भी अल्लाह का डर लोगो हैं बेटिया जहरा की कूफे का नगर लोगो कुल सोम है बेचादर और जैन भी खुले सर है सद है के सकीना के छीने गए गौहर है ये देख के रोता है ये देख के रोता है अबास का सर लोगो हैं बेटिया जहरा की कूफे का नगर लोगो चादर की जगह सर पर चादर की जगह सर पर है खा के सफर लोगो हैं बेटिया जहरा की कूफे का नगर लोगो गाजी मैं तुझे तेराजी राजी मेरा खुदा कहते हैं बाबा से मजलू में कर बला कहते से मजलू में कर बला गाजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा गाजी मैं तुझ पे राजी गाजी मेरा खुदा गाजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा है जन्नतुल बकी से 
है जन्नतुल बकी से भी आ रही सदा जन्नतुल बकी से भी आ रही सदा गाजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा आबास से ये कह कर शबीर रो पड़े मेरी बहन को तेरे अरमान हैं बड़े तेरी वजह से जिसकी महफूज है रिदा तेरी वजह से जिसकी महफूज है राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा उम्र बनी न माँ को मेरा सलाम है सर वफा का पहला माम है जिसको आता हुई है तस्वीर मुर्तजा जिसको आता हुई है तस्वीर मुर्तजा तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा आबास तू है बाबा मुश्किल कुशा का सानी दोनों जहान में तू बाबे वफा का बानी तू इब तदा वफा की तू ही है इंतहा तू इब तदा वफा की तू ही है इंतहा तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा मौदा हुसैन का दिल मातम कदा बना खैमा है सैदा का मंत्र बदल गया वक्त है अलविदा जो शबीर ने कहा वक्त है अलविदा जो शबीर ने कहा है तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा पे राजी राजी तेरा खुदा कहते हैं बाफा से मजलूम कर बला कहते हैं बाफा से मजलूम में कर बला गाजी मैं तुझ पे राजी राजी मेरा खुदा राजी मैं तुझ पे राजी 
Welcome again this evening and to our, our distant friends online. The name Hussein means the one of beautiful character. And what I'd like to do this evening is to explore something of this beautiful character. Looking back first of all into the life of the prophet and then coming forward through the Alton Bay and then coming up to ourselves today. The one of beautiful character. The Quran tells us that you have in the Prophet the most perfect example. Therefore he is one to be followed in all things. This is why we pay so much attention to his hadith, to his teaching, to his sayings, and also to the seerah, to his life biography, to those elements of his life which have been passed down to us. Because we see in these actions and in these words a perfect example of how to live a godly life. There is, you know, the, the time when I assume what was happening is that some of the ladies were sitting with uh, the wives of the prophet and they were asking what's it like to live with a prophet and one answers if you have read or heard the Quran then you see the life of the prophet if you see the life of the prophet it's as though you are reading the Quran and so we then have this saying that the prophet is himself the living Quran he lives out the message in every way. Now, it's important that we, we don't misunderstand his nature here. His nature is to be a perfectly polished mirror to reflect the qualities, the names, the attributes of God. So if you can imagine the most perfectly polished mirror and then the names, the attributes are radiated upon the prophet and they reflect from him and we see them in his life. So it's rather like the example of the moon. We all know that when we see the moon shining at night, the moon has no light in itself. The moon is reflecting the light of the sun. Turn the sun off, dark moon. Turn off the qualities of Allah radiating upon the prophet, no prophet. So in this way then he becomes the perfect example, the perfect mirror that radiates the qualities of God. <clears throat> he radiates all those names or qualities that give us something toward which we should be working. So our task then is to imitate the life of the prophet as the perfect example of those names to develop that beautiful character. So we can say that the path of spiritual perfection of the human being is the imitation of Muhammad. We see, for example, his quality of humility. 
Normally, when we think about rulers, especially in the ancient world, I am above the law. Don't tell me what the law says. I'm the law around here. Now, what we see in the life of the prophet is something completely different. <coughs> he is a ruler who sits under the law. He also is guided by the guidance that he passes to all humankind. So he sits under the Quran. So he's not an arbitrary lawgiver. And we can see this in that example toward the end of his life, not long before he dies. He's quite weak and it's the time for prayer. And a couple of the men come round to help him on the way to the mosque for prayer. And some of the other men who are filled with compassion, of course, for the prophet being helped along, coming to prayer, they say, oh, for goodness sake, you're the messenger of Allah. Surely you can bunk off the prayers this once. And he answers, no, 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 me too, up to the very last moment. Keep on living in that tension between the hope of the reward of heaven and the fear of the punishment of hell. So in this he gives an example. The story is never over. Another good example, because uh, as the one who sits on a chair in the middle of the assembly, it's because of the camera, I promise you, whenever the prophet came into the assembly, there was no place reserved for him. So he would just look around and say, oh, there's a space, and he would sit there. And he would sit on the same level on the floor with everybody else. And so we see an example of leadership. Leadership is through humility. It is through that quality of leadership that comes from the heart and not from sitting on a gilded throne. We see his fearlessness in justice. Many of the aspects that come to be written up in the Sharia are actually drawn from the lived example of the Prophet. So there is a, a good example. Uh, a young woman comes to him one day with two men accompanying her, her father and another man. O oh, messenger of God, she says, my father married me to him without my consent. And the prophet said to the father, is that so? And he said, yeah, of course it's so. That's what we always do. That's the tradition of our people. And the prophet answers, not in Islam, it's not. Marriage dissolved. Now the young woman says, thank you very much, prophet of God. She turns around full circle and she comes back to him and she says, oh, messenger of God, please will you marry me to this man? Same man. Now it's her decision. And of course, the prophet marries them. So from this then we learn several important elements for building of character. Elements for living a Muslim life. First of all, forced marriage is no marriage at all. A woman must be free to give her consent in marriage. Secondly, a woman can initiate divorce proceedings. <coughs> and thirdly, a woman can initiate a proposal. After all, it was Khadija, the wife of the prophet, who actually proposed to him. It was her idea. And he lived within the business, within the, the income of that <coughs> business. It was the business of Khadija that kept the prophetic household. So we see all the time these examples. We see the example of generosity. It was always said of the prophet that he went to bed at night with empty pockets. Whatever had been given him during the day, he had distributed amongst the poor and the needy within the community. There was no hoarding up of treasure chests, as though because I am the prophet I am entitled to keep this. No. Nope. It's given away the very day. 
an example as well of being custodian <coughs> of the good things of God, not something that is kept just for oneself. When we speak of the prophet in this way, of course, we use the phrase al-insan al-kamil, the perfect human being. If we translate it the perfect man, if we're not careful, we misunderstand. His perfection does not lie in his maleness, it lies in his humanity. Therefore, his example is there for everyone, for man, woman, child, for every human being, not just for Muslim people. So the prophet is the property of humanity, not just the property of Muslim people. Therefore, we have to learn to unpack his life, his example for other people. Let us move now from the Prophet himself to Imam Ali. And we know that central to Shia understanding is that soon after the revelation of the Quran had begun, the Prophet was told to call together his family and to declare himself to be the prophet to his family and to ask who would step forward to support. And the <coughs> one who stepped forward to support is Ali, a boy in perhaps what we would call early teenage at the time. And the prophet says, sit down, sit down. Now, who else will, will come to my support? Nobody moves except Ali. And three times it happens. And then in the end he says to him, Ali, you will be my brother, my successor, the executor of my will. You will be my Wali. You will have authority after me. And of course, some of the elder men within the community laugh at this stage and they say, for goodness sake, you know, he's only a boy, and you expect us to take notice of him? Now, the prophet speaks not of his own will, but only by the will of God, says the Quran. Therefore, the prophet, in this designation, this nas, as we say, this designation of Ali, speaks not of his own will, but only by the will of God. So it is the divine will that Ali should be, the successor. That is absolutely fundamental to the Shia understanding of the position of the succession of Ali. Now just imagine if you're a 13 year old boy who is told you will be my successor. You know go back two or three generations every son took on the trade or profession of his father. Every girl took on the trade or profession of her mother. There wasn't a lot of choice in it. It wasn't that you went to the career counsellors. It was that you learned how to do what it was from the very beginning. So you would be teaching, this is how, this is how we do this stitch. This is how we sow these seeds. This is the time of the year that we do this. So there is the young boy, Ali, from the age of 13, with the burden placed upon him, I am to be the successor of the prophet. Do you think that he didn't take notice of everything that the prophet does? Do you think that he didn't try to imitate the prophet in his character, in every aspect of his life and everything that he did? That then is confirmed at the other end of the story in the last months of the Prophet's life at the oasis of Kadiakum. When the Prophet is told you are to declare to the people that without which 
It is as though you have done nothing. Now we've had 23 years of the revelation of the Quran. All the major practices of Islam have been established. We've just finished the Hajj. From the Sunni's perspective, the last verse of the Quran has just been revealed during the farewell sermon of the Hajj. From the Shia perspective, there is of course one verse left to come. And so Gabriel comes to the prophet and says, you are to declare to the people that without which it is though you have done nothing. <coughs> now what on earth can that be? Now we know that everybody within the community knows that the prophet is getting older, is getting weaker. This is the hajj that he's making. Everybody wants to be there if they possibly can. He may well not live to the next time for Hajj. And so it's probably the biggest gathering of Muslims that he ever sees in his entire life. And Khadir Khum is that oasis where the ways part. And so what does he do? He calls them back, send messengers after them. We don't move until they return. And then he gathers the community together he raises himself up onto a higher place so that they can see him and he takes the hand of Ali and says all those of you for whom I am your Maulana, Ali is to be your Maulana after me. That again is fundamental to Shia understanding of the designation of Ali as the successor of the Prophet as the first Imam. Now we move to this term Imam that we use. And we say of the Imams that they are Masum. Now often we translate Masum as infallible. Infallible means one who does not err one who makes no error in speech or in teaching. That is not strong enough for masum. Masum means sinless, one who is without sin. Now the technical term for that is impeccable, without sin. If you are without sin, you are also going to be infallible. But it's possible to be infallible without being <coughs> sinless. So this is to be sinless. And we say that the Prophet, the twelve Imams, and Lady Fatima are masum. They are sinless. Let's examine that sinlessness for a moment. They are perfectly, 100% human, like the rest of us. Otherwise, they are useless as an example. You cannot model your life on a robot, or on Superman, or on an animal, or on an angel. You can only model your life on somebody who is like you in all things. Therefore, we have to say that they had the capacity to sin. So their sinlessness does not mean they could not sin. Rather, it means they did not sin. They did not sin because of divine protection, because of divine illumination, because they were given a knowledge by God. Now, how often, you know, have mothers or fathers said to their children, if only you knew how much that hurt me, you would never have said that thing. <coughs> hmm? To know the consequence of something, to know how much harm that will do, means that you would not do it. <coughs> so, the Imams, the Masum, have knowledge of the consequences of sin 
and therefore they avoid it. Let's just move a little further into that sin question. What is the difference between an angel and a human being? An angel has no free will. An angel does not have the capacity to sin, to rebel. An angel automatically always does what it's told to do. It is, if you like, in modern terms, a robot. Tell it to do this, it will do that. The human being has the dignity of free will. Because the human being has the capacity to do a free act. So time for another example. We have at home a washing machine. We throw the washing in, we put in the washing liquid, we set it going and it washes the clothes. But I never feel the need to get down and give it a big kiss and say thank you washing machine. Hmm? just done what it was programmed to do, that's all. That is a programmed act, an act of a robot. Second example, the washing machine breaks down. All week the washing has been piling up. Saturday morning. I know that my wife has had a really tough week of it, so have I. But I get up early in the morning before she wakes up, I get downstairs and I get a tub of water and I start working my way through the pile of washing. Now I have done an act of a totally different quality. I have done a free act of a free being. I have done an act based on love, based on altruism, based on charity, only a free being can do those things. Therefore, we're told that God has got as many angels as God wants in heaven, constantly worshipping God. Bully. They are programmed to do it. And what God asks us as human beings is freely to choose, freely to worship God an act of a totally different quality. That's what makes the human being superior to the angels. Remember the incident in the Quran where Allah tells the angels and the jinn that they are to bow and to acknowledge the superiority of the human being. Because of our gift of free will, we are able to do a free act. Again, you remember another saying of Imam Ali when he says, Some people worship God out of the fear of hell. That is the worship of slaves. Some people worship God out of the hope of the reward of heaven. That is the worship of merchants. Bora, excuse me. That is the worship of merchants. And some people worship God out of pure love for God alone. That is the worship of the servants of God. So the motivation for human action must always be the worship of God alone, the love of God, <coughs> not the hope of reward. That's a free act, a free act of a free being. Okay. Let's then go back to the early household of the Prophet. Because it is not alone, Ali growing up as a young boy, observing, imitating, molding his life and character on the life of the Prophet, but it is also Lady Fatima. Fatima also is growing up in that household. Fatima also is 
in a position of deep love and imitation of her father. <laughs> Do you remember that lovely episode when the prophet is coming close to death and he calls Fatima to him and says, you know, I'm soon going to die. And of course she's very sad. And then he says, but you will be the first to follow me. And she is full of joy. This was the closeness that they had. And we're told in many accounts that when Fatima entered the room, the Prophet would make a place for her. That always she had that close place in his affection. So you have got the two of them growing to adulthood in the prophetic household as it were drinking in the sonar of the Prophet. Drinking in his example, <coughs> modelling their character on his example. And then, of course, they marry, and Hassan and Hussein are born to them. And we know again through many accounts in history that the Prophet always wanted to have his two grandsons close to him. And we learn of many little episodes of, of affection between the grandfather and the grand children. So we see then a whole model that character is developed within the family so that it is as it were, it, it's, it's sucked in, it's taken in with the very breath of living in the family itself. And it is of course within this family that we see our role models for developing our own beautiful character. The episode of the, the kiswar, of the, of the blanket or the cloak or whatever it was, in which the Prophet Fatima, Ali, Hassan, Hussein are called together under the cloak, and then the verse of the Quran is revealed, I have purified you with the most thorough purification and rendered you the best of humankind. Now, the most thorough purification, only the pure can purify others. Only the purest can most thoroughly purify. And so this is again the action of God purifying the Ahl Bayt so that they may be forever a, an example for us. Now this then makes it critical that we, <coughs> we learn from and model our lives on their example. That's the whole principle of the, of the practice. And then of course we come to the, the um, crucial hadith, the hadith of the two most precious things. I leave after me two most precious things, the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. Never shall these two separate until they come to me at the fountain, at the gate of paradise. Now the model here is a model of a railway track. Two lines on the railway track. If they separate, the train doesn't move. If there's only one of them, the train doesn't move. You need both of them, and they need to be perfectly parallel all the time in order for the train of human perfection to work. This is why we need to be studying not only the life and teaching of the prophet, but the life and the teaching of the imams also. <coughs> now, we're nearly... We're nearly up to time. So let's go back to our mirror. Because it is not just the prophet who has this mirror. It is every one of us. This is the nature of being a human being. The mirror of the human heart is to be polished so that we too may reflect ever more perfectly those qualities of God that radiate. 
Now, how do we polish this mirror? Well, it's a very interesting question. If you were to ask, what is the purpose of religion? Well, if you ask that in society, they would tell you, religion is there to screw up the lives of decent people. That's how lots of people in society think of religion. How though would we answer the question? Well, my answer is this, that the practices of religion are there in order to bring us deeper into and to keep us in a state of taqwa. Taqwa is God consciousness. If I am conscious of God in every moment of my life, in everything that I do and say and am, then there will be no room for sin to enter into my life. So the whole function, prayer does not exist <coughs> just for itself. If I don't pray, it doesn't harm God at all. But it harms me in that I am failing to purify, to polish my soul. Fasting is not there for, it is there, we're told, you know, something we owe to God. But it is there to have an impact upon the human heart. Now, the way that we're struggling in taqwa then is as though we've got We've got brasso and a good piece of cloth, and we're polishing and polishing until we need to go on to jeweler's rouge or something in order to polish it ever more. So the whole function is one of polishing the human heart so that we too may become mutaki, so that we too may live constantly in the state of taqwa. And I always like that very much misunderstood saying of the prophet, marriage is half of your religion. <laughs> now this does not mean that the day after your wedding day you're halfway to paradise. It means that you have now entered the best possible laboratory for polishing the human heart, for learning humility, generosity, care and compassion for others, for making an honest living in order to support your family, to be a character builder for your children, to perfect the character of the two partners, etc. So anybody who thinks that it's all going to be a bed of roses from then onwards has just made a slight mistake. So every time you read one of those advertisements in the paper that says, you know, I want to complete my religion by getting married. <laughs> Little do they know. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, um, I shall now pause, because we have a little time, the Dharma is nodding to me, in which we can have comments and questions and discussion and please. The difference between human being and animal. Yes. According to my knowledge, Iblis was one of the angels. Aha. Uh -huh. No. And he disobeyed. Aha. Uh -huh. So Iblis, he had a free will, that's why he disobeyed. Mm -hmm. Iblis, the Quran tells us, was a jinn. So we have angels, we have human beings, and we have jinn. Angels made of light, human beings made of clay, jinn made of fire. And we're told that jinn share with human beings free will. Now, Iblis was a kind of super pious <coughs> jinn who was always wanting to knock around with the angels. And he was always in the company of the angels, praising and worshipping God. But you know, sometimes piety can give way to <coughs> arrogance. And arrogance <coughs> gives way to rebellion. So you remember the stories we have it in the Quran when Allah tells the angels, the jinn, Adam, human beings, I am going to send human beings to the earth to be my khalifa, to be my regent upon the earth. 
and he says to the angels tell me the names of all the things of the earth and they say we do not know you have not told us and then Allah teaches the names to the human beings and then says to the angels and to the jinn you are now to bow down and acknowledge the superiority of the human beings and that this Iblis is like a 1960s shop steward you remember huh stands at the back with his arms folded not doing it <laughs> And he calls out to God and he says, don't do it. Take it from me. If you send these humans to the earth, they will create mischief upon the earth. They will shed blood. Don't do it, God. Take it from me. Now, this is the ultimate challenge. This is when piety trips over into arrogance. Because what he's saying is, I know better than you know, God. And you remember the Quranic verse goes on to say that Allah says to him, he says, I know what you do not know. And then he commands them, angels and jinn acknowledge the human beings. Now, angels, wolf, robots. Jinn split into two groups. One, wolf. The other group stand at the back with Iblis. Now Allah has got a problem, and the problem is this, if you create a free being, by definition you cannot control the outcome, otherwise it's not freedom. So Iblis says, listen God, me and my lads, we are going to go down to the earth and we are going to tempt the socks off those human beings and we're going to prove to you that we were right and you were wrong. And Allah says, you're going to do what you're going to do. I've made you free beings. You have chosen to use that freedom that I have given you in a way that I do not want you to do. You are rebellious. But you are free beings. But let me tell you this. You will have no power over those who are full of taqwa. Those who are mutaki, they will be uh, immune to your power. But for those who are God forgetful, then I'm afraid the door of Iblis is open. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, sir. Your lectures are good, but one thing is that we are all from a path in Edawa. Yes. And so we follow a Mustad in Tayyab Yafed. Yes. Or Imams. Yes. So when you said 12 Imams, the Imam chain that you are referring to, yes. 12 Imams, is not what we follow. Correct. Another thing, Imam Ali. Yes. We don't say Imam Ali. Yes. He is a Wali, as you said, he's a yes. Wali. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's either Hazrat Ali or Mawlana Ali. Thank you very much. So the chain of Imams, I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, changed from Imam Jafar Sadiq until then, we were all together as one Shia. Mm -hmm. And since then, we have followed another chain, so do the Aga Khani. And the Aga Khani is where it's our, our, in our chain. But they followed another Imam, Nazir, and we followed Mustali, so that's why we are of the Mustali faith. And they, of course, so when you when you are sorry when sorry. you are saying it in this uh, sermon mm -hmm. about twelve imams mm -hmm. and Imam Ali and so I would just like that clarified because we are an audience of Dawoodi Bora. Okay, here. thank you very much. That's a very important point. Would you therefore say uh, we have uh, 21, 22, 23 Masu? Twenty one. Twenty one imams. Yes. The Prophet is not Masu. Prophet is Masum. Lady Fatima is Masum? Yes. 23 then? Yes. Okay. 23 Masum. Yes? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Can I just say, uh, I thought, I thought, um, Allah said 
to the jinn that you will be in the veins of all the people flowing in the veins. That's, that's why humans are weak. Um, I, I, I've not read that myself. I don't know. But you may be right. Certainly, every human being. So he, he, Allah gave certain conditions to Iblis, and Adam asked for the same, for the same. So what, what do I give my my people? Mm -hmm. Then Allah just said, yeah, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, and he even asked for more. Same way Iblis asked for more, Adam asked for more. Okay. I have a video for it, so I, this is what I do. Thank you very much. There's Iblis in our veins, in all, all humanity. So was it one jinn Iblis, or were there a lot of jinns? And were there a lot of jinns who were told to bow to Adam, or only Iblis was told to bow to Adam? Uh, Iblis, yeah, jinn. Iblis don't have his, doesn't have partners. Iblis becomes the leader of the rebellious jinn, and he asks for the favor of living until the end of times, because we're told that jinn are mortal. In other words, jinn will die, <coughs> and jinn reproduce. So, however many jinn there was at the start, more jinn, like human beings, reproduced throughout the centuries. But Iblis is granted by Allah the, um, the privilege, the, uh, he is granted his wish that he should live until the end times. Um, and therefore he is a constant leader of the rebellious jinn. However many, Allah knows best. What I wanted to ask was, you know, when you said at the very coming, uh, Rasulullah announced for Mawlana Ali, so why were only the few people believing in that? Why the majority of the Sunnis don't believe that? As far as my knowledge goes, the event is recorded in both traditions. But the Sunni authors say that this was not a declaration that he was to be the Maulana, the master, the teacher, um, after the prophet. And they give some much more minor interpretation. They say that um, Ali had been leading a, uh, a, a military force down to the Yemen. Things had gone badly. People were kind of picking on Ali, and the Prophet was saying, you know, lay off, lay off. In other words, they interpret the event with a completely different meaning. Now, only the few. The, um, the Shia account of the event tells us that after the Prophet has made his declaration of Ali as his successor, as his wali, the one with God-given authority, divinely appointed, then the community of those who were present came and made their bayah to him. They pledged their allegiance to him. And in some accounts we're told that that took a couple of days because there were so many people there. Now here becomes the, the really tricky bit because of course amongst those who were present were Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. So that they also knew what was happening. And that, of course, is from the Shia sources. From the Sunni sources, we have a different interpretation. If we didn't, we wouldn't have these two schools. And sorry about the Masum. Yes. Um, 24. Because Imam Ali is not Imam, so we've got 21 Imams. After him, 24. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, we, we, we won't push it any further. <laughs> but of course, the Imam in occultation, as I understand the Mustalian tradition, the Imam in occultation actually is reproducing. Yes. Yes? Yes. So therefore, the 21st Imam is not, as the Ifnashari believe, going to reappear. Yes. But it will be a descendant of yes. the 21st yes. Imam. Yes. So we could have more than 24. Yes. And now we'll end by saying, Allah for Allah. <laughs> How many? Well, we've got 42 at the last count. Oh. Yes. Oh. There is, there's a, there's a actually named Imams up to 42. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. I never come to that. Which one is that? Amity Bora? No, I was. So why, why do they have the dies all the time? Yeah? Because the Imams are still in the background. <laughs> There's still an occultation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought there's only one Imam Mahdi in occultation. Mm -hmm. and that's the according to Harish Nashri. Harish Nashri, the 12th yeah. Imam, will reappear. Okay. For us, it, will want, it won't be the 21st Imam who will reappear, but someone from his progeny, from his child, from his family. It makes logic sense, right? Yeah. The, the Imam is going to carry on. Uh, it, carries on. it makes it makes logical sense in both traditions. So let's have the Bora. Let's have the, the yes, the Bora logic first, which is that um, which is that uh, in the natural chain of human life, you're going to get old, you're going to die. And therefore, you are infallibly going to pass on the designation into the next generation. That makes logical sense. From the Ifnashari point of view, what they say is the Imam only goes into occultation because of the fear that he would be killed. You know, they have this tradition of the 11th Imam, Hassan al Askari, and um, that he even kept the birth of the 12th Imam secret so that people didn't know about it. There was a fear that he would be killed. Therefore, the occultation is to preserve his life from death. Um, therefore, that's why he's in occultation. And then they say, you know, uh, God grants him an extended life and he will eventually reappear. But that's because they place a huge symbolism on the 12. And they say it's like the 12 tribes of, of Israel, like the 12 disciples or, or apostles of Jesus. This 12 becomes uh, a, a very important symbolic number. And that's why they stick with the 12. So within both traditions, um, there's a logic. Don't ask me to solve it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, please, can you, um, what is occultation? Can you simplify you occultation? Is sim is occultation simple. is that the Imam is not dead, yes, but is hidden from our human sight, yes. So, occultation means to go into hiding, okay. He's, he's, he's about, but we don't know where. Um, the Imam is hidden from our sight. <coughs> he is in an earthly realm. He's in the universe, but not yeah. in our sight. But when he appears, he will have certain qualities that other humans will not have. Right. For example, he won't have a shadow. Right, yes. yes. See? So, so the, the jinn's in our projection as well. We don't see him, but he's still about. Uh, <laughs> uh, you may pray that you will never see Iblis. Okay? Because this is the shaitan, this is the tempter. Now, some people one. say that they can see jinn, or they have seen jinn, but... They are hallucinating. I have no idea what happens to them. Maybe they have a certain spiritual exaltation that I don't have. But for most of us, thank goodness, jinn are invisible. Yes. We, we, we use the phrase, they inhabit a parallel universe. Now, you know that you know in, in, in village life, jinn are very much part of everyday life. You know? Why did your milk 
curdled because a gin walked past me. <laughs> why? Why <laughs> is there always something bad happening in that house? Because it should never have been <clears> built <throat> there. Because it was built over a gin house. <clears throat> well, no. I mean, <clears throat> but let's not get into what we know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they find out what we know nothing about. Well, we know nothing about. <laughs> we know nothing about. Um, Let's educate ourselves what we know nothing about. Uh, we know nothing about the uh, the interaction of the jinn with humankind beyond the fact that jinn can be both good and bad because they have free will. And they can interact with human beings either in a good way. So we, we talk sometimes of the muse that comes to a poet, that helps a poet to, to write beautiful poetry. Or the jinn who has a, a bad influence, who becomes a tempter and tempts us away from the right path. Write a bad rap. A bad one. Spirit the same as Jin? Spirit roaming around sometimes? A, a, when the word spirit is used in the Quran, it certainly doesn't have the meaning of Jin. Uh, you know, the, these terms become used very freely in, in society, you know? The sprites of the trees, or, you know, or, I mean, these are, these are non-technical terms in this sense. Where is spirit in the Quran? Uh, it is the the ruh which is breathed into Adam. It is soul. Which gives life. It is well, soul, yeah. It's not quite just soul uh, because ruh means wind, means breath, and also means spirit. And we're told that Jesus, for example, is spirit of God breathed into the womb of the Virgin Mary. And then we're told, I mean, the scholars then extrapolate on this, and they say that this is, um, first of all, that soul, that life, that breath, the command of God expressed in the breath that gives all of us life. And you know that if you watch somebody dying, you can tell when, when the spirit has left them. Secondly, it is, the scholars understand it to be the spirit of prophecy. Now, the spirit of prophecy is given to all the prophets, however many of them there were, 124,000 according to one hadith. Right. However, certainly in the case of Jesus, and dominantly in the Shia tradition in the case of other prophets too, that spirit... <coughs> Of prophecy is given at birth or at conception <coughs> in the womb and then you know that we have uh, in the Quran Jesus speaking from the cradle proclaiming <coughs> himself to be a prophet and so this then is <coughs> that bearing witness to his prophecy as a newborn baby now that's why in the Shia tradition it always is said that Prophets are prophets and are sinless from the moment of their birth to the moment of their death. They are always full of knowledge and there is no doubt in them because of this action of the divine um, illumination, the ilham, which is given to them. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Soldiers joined the enemy's camp. 
Thousands have gathered to kill the sin, the grandson of the holy prophet, leading to the Rina to kill brother. Brother is saying, thousands of soldiers are gathering to fight for you. You have hardly them to be men with us. Do you not have anyone to come to your help? My sister Zena, many wanted to join me during the journey from Medina to Kerbala. I politely discouraged them because their intention was not truthful. Many joined and had run away during the journey because they were scared of dying. He continued, Zena, my sister, falsehood can buy many supporters, but truth has only a few friends. The soldier on the other side may have been bought. They prefer happiness in this world than in the world hereafter. I, as a truthful man, prefer happiness in the world hereafter, and that is why they are here with me. That night, Imam Hussein wrote a letter to his childhood friend, Habib ibn Zahir, who was in Kufa. Kufa was locked up and nobody was allowed to leave. Habib ibn Zahir did not know the whereabouts of Imam Hussein until the letter from Hussein arrived at his house. At the time, he was having breakfast with his wife and the young son. Habib read the letter from Hussein. <coughs> He kissed it and tears began to flow from his eyes. His wife had asked him what was wrong. Habib said, I have received a letter from my master, Hussein. He has asked me to, to join him in Karbala. His youth soldiers have surrounded him and asked him after his life. Habib's wife said, Habib, your childhood friend is calling. Your master needs help. What are you waiting for? Go, Habib, before it is too late. Habib's worry was how to escape from Kufa without being seen. He instructed his slaves to take his horse to a farm outside the city and to wait for him there. The slave did as he was told. The slave took Habib's horse on to a the farm outside the city. He waited for his master. His master was delayed. The slave started talking to Habib. Oh, horse, Master Hussein is in trouble. He needs help. He has asked my master Habib to join him. Master Habib is saying, horse, if he does not manage to escape from Kufa, I will ride on you and go to Hussein's house. At other time, most of the men were at the mosque. Habib managed to reach the farm where his horse was waiting. He quickly mounted his horse and said to the slave, Go, my friend, go, and free me from my services. Master! You are not being fair. I have served you faithfully for years. Now I have to have a chance to serve the son of Bibi Fatima, and you are asking me to go? Why are you denying me a place in heaven? Habib was taken aback by the words of his slave. He was pleased to hear that he had recognized the difference between the truth and the wrong way. He wanted to sacrifice his life for truth. Habib asked his slave to mount his horse. Together they galloped towards Kobala. Habib reached Karbala late in the evening. Imam Hussein greeted him with great affection. Bibi Zainab heard that Habib had come. She had asked the maid for her to convey his greetings to her Habib. When Habib heard that Bibi Zainab had sent greetings to him, he screamed out in grief and anger. He threw his turban down to the ground. He slapped his face. Tears rolled down his cheeks as he said, What a sad day! What has happened to the household of Bibi Fatima, the princess, granddaughter of the Holy Prophet, the daughter of Ali and Fatima, sending her greetings to an ordinary person like me? Disease, you beast, you tyrant! What have you done to the household of Bibi Fatima? The days and nights of Mahara passed by and Ashura came. At dawn, Ali Akbar gave his arm for the last time. His youth soldiers blew the trumpets to start the battle. One by one, Hussein's companions went to the battlefield and gave their lives for Islam. Hussein, Abbas, and Ali Akbar were busy from dawn to midday, collecting bodies from the battlefield. Between Zohar and Azra time, Habib ibn Zahir came to Hussein. He said, My master, Hussein, Allow me to go to the battlefield. Let me sacrifice my life for Islam. Habib, my childhood friend, stay with me. You give me comfort, my friend. Habib insisted to his request. Eventually, Hussein gave his permission. Hussein mounted his friend, Habib, on the bed. Habib ibn Zahir rode into the battlefield. He fought bravely.
bravely that he was finally overpowered. He fell to the ground. As Habib ibn Muhammad fell to the ground, an enemy soldier came over and cut off his head. All the martyrs of Karbala had had their heads cut off, and Habib was the first to be cut off by the enemy. Habib's head was not hung on the spearhead like the other martyrs. Habib's head was tied to a horse and pulled along with the line of Karbala. Later on in Sham, Habib's head was tied to the horse's neck. A young boy called Qasim followed the horse wherever it went. One day, the man riding the horse asked the young boy Qasim, Why are you following me around? What do you want? Carson looked at the head hanging from the horse's neck. The man asked again, Why are you staring at the head? That this head is the head of my father, Habib ibn Mazahir. Please give it to me so that I can bury my <coughs> father's head. Habib seemed to, to look at his son and say, My son, Carson, you are thinking of burying my head? What about the head of the same on, on the spearhead? In the <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين طه وياسين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المحسونين المظلومين जेमें कहूत के इमाम हुसैन अली सलाम जय मदीना थी रवाना था तरह एमने जय वसियत करी एम भाई मोहम्मद इब्ने हनफिया तो एने अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मनकर नो शब्द आप अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मनकर इमाम एट इलाम नो पाये दुनिया अंदर इंसान कोई चीज चाहे चे, चे प्रिंसिपल्स हो हदफ हो एम हो कामे जाए तेरे कहे कि मैं आज आ काम पूरु करने वक्त बीजी वस्तु आ जाए कि जेनी अंदर इंसान गोटवाई जाए गोटवाई जाए अंदर डिस्ट्रेक्ट थी जाए डिस्ट्रेक्ट थी जाए तो पी मेन पर्पज ने हदफत भूलाई जाए तो इमाम हुसैन जय कहे अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मुनकर तरह इमाम लोग हाईलाइट करे कि भाई अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मुनकर मेन पर्पज है हूँ अँ थी जाऊँ छू मदीना थी मक्का करबला करबला थी जासे बदाय कूफा श्याम मकसद एक अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मुनकर वच में जे चीज आए इंसान ने घेरी ले से पर याद रखो खपे ई एवं मौको आए जेव एटमोस्फियर आए कदी भी भूलजो नहीं कि तब शाटे आ कर अम्रबिल मारूफ और नही अनिल मुनकर दाखलो आप लड़ाई मौला अली लड़े नमाज नाइम थे जोहर नो के अस्तर नमाज नाइम थे इमता मुसलो लाइन नमाज पढ़े साचीओ कह मौला अँ लड़ाई चाली रही है तब अतरे नमाज इम कहे आ लड़ाई छे के ना नमाज ने कायम करने नमाज ने कायम करने लड़ाई करे छे, तो पी जो आप जो नमाज के भूली जाए आ तो फायदो शू आशुरा रात 
इबादत कर रिवायत में कर्जो फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल इलाम कदी भी कोई चीज एटमोस्फियर आज हकीकत इमाम हुसैन जे सिंसियरिटी थी आप देखिए ना खुलूस थी ये अपनी जान आपी इन्हीं अंदर अल्लाह ने इतनी पसंद थी गई इतनी पसंद आ भी गई कि जे पन आ भी हो चाहे आ आजादारी नहीं रुकावट करवा माटे ये चाय लग गए चे आजादारी रह गई चे बे हजार ने त्रण माह हम क्यों तो ज़िआरत पर आशुराबंदी रजा मी करम बंद जाए पी ते अंदर जा सो कोई मातम करने रजा पाबंदी वट आई गिव इमाम हुसैन आजादारी बंद करने नजफ थी करबला जाओ तो अरबई में बदा चाले भूख मारे ते जो टीवी में मैं एक्सपीरियंस कर रस्ता में मणसों तक मफत खावा आपे पग दबा दिए टीश्यू आपे कपड़ा फाटी गया तो संचो हो बढ़ू कर 
i agau ni alokani tradition che era i band kari nakhi chalwani raja ni koi ne aavi ne koi ne koi zawar ne khavanu mafat devani raja ni ini koshish su hati ke ek generation bhuli jase to badu band kari jase ek karva mangyo 2003 Jadi nikrio, sedam tu ojita lo alokani under je muhabbat ati pasti sahih kerja. Ekte jetli koshis, jetla karya ceh dunia ni under, i Imam Hussein ni azadai ni mitawa mati ini resamate, Jadi Imam Hussein alaihi salam, utan u badu dayu, su na api, utan i jan api, utan a dikrau ni jan api, garwarau ni jan api, ashabu ni jan api, utan i garma jetli behno hati, jetli ni bivio hati, badai ni edi kabul kari, shena mati Allah ni dini kari. Le Allah sama kaya cik ke awe tu badu dayi di do mara mate aje wu badu api dayi stari yad ne makam dunia ni andar kaya mat nati wasudi kara mate. Ha beda ashabu hata imam le islam mate te wo pan sin sierat. Imam pasi kitla ashab inter bounter so kitla ke ko skribat maso mare cik. Wadari mashhur bangte riwayat ini. Bangte ini sama 40.000. Cita ya aja. I 40.000 nu nama nanti. Yazid ni kabar nu thekar nu nanti. Koi ne joyu cie ke kya cie Yazid ni kabar. Koi ne kabar cie Umar Esad ni kabar kya cie. Koi ne kabar cie ke Ibn Ziyad ni kabar kya cie ke Shimr kya dafnai lo cie. Koi ne nanti kabar. Pati mo baun ter je hata elo kani yad aji ti je ekek na nam je ekek ni kabar je chama te allah jare koi ne lei je ena hat ma raki de ke allah ena upar eni security raki de koi kai ni kari je ap kari balano maksat je ke bai tami pan ni pote imam se na kadmo ti ena pogat ya ti jalo कि जेनाती तमे पन एवा थता जाओ कि ते ना थी दुनिया जे ये इथा से तमे बाकी मक्कम रेसो तमारा दीन मा अने तमारा खुलूस मा कोई काई नहीं करी आप करबला में करबला मा एक एक हस्तियों ने जोई लेया एक एक हस्तियों ने जोई के ला मक्कम ते वो हता होता ना पाया मा इतना मकम होता कि खपे इथाई कहीं नहीं ये मैं हजरत अब्बास ने आपे लिया और इन्हीं शुजात के भी कि सिफ़ीन ना मैदान ने अंदर ये चाहे चे कि हम जाओ तो इमाम अली ने कहे चे जा इन्हीं उमर बार के तेर हसे के चौद हसे अने ते एवित ना लड़े चे नो कर्जे लाम्बो हतु ऊपर निकाब हतु जारे लड़ी ने आवे लड़ता हता तो लोगों के अली आवे आचे जारे एनु निकाब खोली हुए ने जे कमर खोली अरबा बंद करे जारे जो यू के आतो अब्बास चे ने कहीं यू के आ कमरे बनी आशीन चे ए वी एन नी त्राण चार हस्त चार हस्तियों हती इमाम चे ने लड़वा जाता था जीतवा माटे ने जादेरी जीत माटे ने लाम भी जीत माते जाए। एक चार ए भी हस्तियों हती कि जे वो बेगा थाए तो दुश्मनों ना दुश्मनों ने जहन्नम बासी करी जाए। एक हता मुस्लिम इब्ने अकील लड़वा माते। बीजा हता मोहम्मद इब्ने हदफिया। त्रीजा हता 
हजरते अब्बास पोते ने इमाम हुसैन पर एमिले लड़ाई के लड़ाई आशुरा नदीब से इमाम बदाई ने छूटो छूटो करी मोहम्मद इब्ने हनफी ने मदीना मारा मुस्लिम ने अकील ने मुकलावी कूफा हजरत अब्बास ने जारे लड़ाई में मुकले छे तारे एने कहे छे लड़ाई ने पान लियो तो विचार कर लियो के एने हजरत जर कोई शुजा मानस होय ब्रेव मानस होय ये कभी भी ये भी चीज कबूल न करे कि जेन अंदर एम ने लागे कि आबूज दे दी छे भाई शौक की जाए तो जारे इमाम हुसैन ने कहे छे कि ना आ करवानो छे यानी इतली एनी इमाम ऊपर एम नु जे आपरे कहे कि ईमान ने भरोसो अने एटलो रिस्पेक्ट हतो कि जे ई चाहता था ई कबूल वांदो नथी इमाम चाहे छे ई मारो पर धाली इतने जो के हजरत अब्बास इस समय पर पहले कितु ने इमाम हुसैन ने कि नहीं आवित ना मारू काम सूचे आलू का ने सफाई करवा मारे कभी भी ना करे पर इमाम जाने चाहिए सु करवा पे ने हजरत अब्बास ने लड़ाई ये लड़ाई हती जारे ई गया अने कोई फुराक सुधी ना पहुंची शक्ति जे इमाम जे हजरत अब्बास बोला बास पहुंची शक्ति सामने की ये संदेश आ गया कि कोई भी रीते अब्बास ने पाछो आऊ न जो कोई भी रीते अब्बास ने पाछो आऊ न जो आ हजरत अब्बास ने एक खूबी हती एक खूबी हती कि जारे हजरत अब्बास पाछा आवे छे तारे एक लाइन वाट जोय छे एना हाथ ने कलम करे छे बीजो लाइन पछी एना बीजा हाथ ऊपर करे छे कोशिश ई छे के आज छे आ मश्क जे छे ई कभी भी पहुंची सके अने एने मश्क ऊपर तीर आवे के जेना थी पानी बदु ढोराई जाय छे अने एनी अंदर वाला अब्बास ने अरमान बन पूरी थई गई बदी ये ढोराई गई अने त्याज ने त्याज जारे ए ए ए जमीन ऊपर जमीन ऊपर आवे छे गोरा माथी जारे इमाम ने बुलाए छे कहे छे मने पाछा खैमा नहीं ले जा मैंने अयाज रख चुके हैं वो शर्मिंदा चुके हैं अने ये इन्हीं खाईश ने रखता रखता जो था इमाम इमाम जिन लाभी थी ये इतना करियो कि इन्होंने दफन के लिए अलग थे जहाँ एक मुजरी गया जहाँ शहीद थे या क्या आज इन्हें दफन किया पर इन्हीं हालत थे गए हती इन्हीं हालत जे हती लोगों ये जेठ बहुत जुल्म करी खुरबला ने जारे मुख्तार मुख्तार सकफी जे छे ए वायदो करियो तो क्यों एक एक करबला ना दुश्मन नो एक एक दुश्मन जे मेन दुश्मन हता बद्दाय मातो ने इंतकाम रे तो लगा रिवेंज ने अने एक एक ने पकड़ी शिमर संडास मा टॉयलेट मा संताई गयो एने पकड़ी ने मारी जरे हुरमला ने पकड़े छे तारे एक आ आपरे जे रिवायतो मले छे करबला ने एमा एक कारण ये छे के डिटेल छे कारण के एनी अंदर मुख्तार ए बधाई ने जरे बोला के तू सु करे खुली ने पूछे छे तू सु करे एक एक ने पूछे ने के तमे सु करा करबला ने तो हुरमला ने कहे छे हुरमला के छे के त्राण तीर में एवी मारी त्राण तीर के एवी मारी छे मे के जेनी अंदर हकीकत मा एमे एम थी के आ खराब चीज थी चीज पहली तीर एने कहियो के हु हजरत अब्बास जारे पाछा वरता था त्यारे अल्लाह मश्क मा तीर मे मारी बीजी तीर ए अली असगर जनाब अली असगर ने अने त्रीजी तीर जे छे ए इमाम हुसैन ने के जारे एक गोरा बाबा था अने जारे दुश्मनो एना ऊपर पत्थर फेंकता था त्यारे हुरमलाए एवी तीर मारी के जेना थी इमाम नु जे आपरे कहे बैलेंस जे छे चालू कयो अने ए गोरा माथी जमीन ऊपर आ गई आ त्रण तीर हती पण तेओ दुश्मन कभी कदी भी इमाम हुसैन नो आ करी ने कदी भी तेओ ने सहन शक्ति न मिली तेओ हमेशा प्रॉब्लम मा रिया जे इतना खुली हतो खुली इमाम हुसैन ने कहे छे के हु तमने कोई भी पानी नहीं आपू इमाम हुसैन कहे छे के हु तारा ऊपर एवी दुआ करू छु 
કે તું પાણી પીસ પસંદ એનું એનું જે એની જે આપણે કહીએ ને કે પ્યાસ ક્યારે હોય ઈશાનને કે પાણી પીએ તો એની ઠંડક હોય એ નહીં હોય ને ખુલીનું રિવાયત મળે છે કે એક વિવાદ મેં ખુલી પાણી પીએ તરસ જાય જ નહીં પાણી પીએ તરસ જાય જ નહીં પેટ ફૂલતું જાય ફૂલતું જાય ફૂલતું જાય એમાં એ બીમારીમાં મળી જાય એ ઈમામ અલી હિ સલામ ઉપર આટલા એવા જુલ્મ કર્યા કે ઈમામ છેલ્લે બાકી ગણે ને બધું આ દીધું છે અને આ કરબલાના હીરોઝ જે આપણે કહીએ એને આપણે યાદ કરીએ એટલા માટે કે એ લોકોની જે લાઈફ જે છે એ લોકોને આપણે અપનાવી દસ દિવસ આપણે મોહરમ ના હોય પછી આપણે અશ્રો કરીએ ને ચાલીસ મો કરીએ ચેલું કરીએ આયા આ એક રસમ છે રહેતા હતા અને દરરોજ રાતના ઈશાની કે ઝોહરની કે મગરીબ કે ઈશાની એ ટાઈમે જઈને ઈમામ હુસેનના રોઝામાં જઈને એની ઝ્યારત કરીને ઘરે જાય રિવાયતમાં મળે છે કે એમને જનાબે ફાતેમા ઝાહરા સપનામાં આવે છે અને કહે છે કે શું છે જોઈ છે કે જનાબે ઝાહરા જરા બેચેનીમાં છે એ કહે છે કે મારાથી નારાજ કેમ છો એ કે કેમ ન હું નારાજ એ કે કેમ મારા દીકરાની કોઈ બીજું ઝ્યારત નથી કરતી કેમ ન બને દરરોજ રાતના હું જાઉં છું તમારા દીકરાની ઝ્યારત કરવા માટે કેવો હુસેની વાત નથી કરતો અબ્બાસની વાત કરે છે એ પણ મારો દીકરો છે એની કેમ ઝ્યારત નથી કરતા કારણ કે એ ઈમામ હુસેનનો પાયો હતા જ્યારે ઈમામ હુસેન સમાચાર મળે છે કે હઝરત અબ્બાસ હવે ગોરાથી નીચે અને ઈમામ ને બોલાવે છે અને પુકારે છે ત્યારે ઈમામ કહે છે અને રિવાયતમાં એ મળે છે કે જયારે તેઓ પુરાત થી પાછા વળે છે ત્યારે કોઈ અઝત અબ્બાસ નો સામનો કરી નથી શકતા તો બે એવા દુશ્મનો હતા મલુન કે જે ખજૂરના ઝાડમાં સંતાઈ ગયા અને જયારે હઝરત અબ્બાસ ત્યાં વટાય છે ત્યારે એક જે છે એના એક કલમ ઉપર વાર કરે છે અને એનો 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 હાથ જે છે અહીંયાથી જમીન ઉપર આવે છે આગળ જઈને બીજા ઉપર કલમ કરે છે ત્યારે એનો હાથ જે છે એ બીજો હાથ જાય છે મશ્ક ને દાંતમાં રાખીને હજી આગળ જતા જાય છે ચાહે છે કે જે પણ થાય છેલ્લે બાકી પાણી ખાઈવામાં પહોંચી જાય જેનાથી ખેમા વાળા ને લાગે કે હજી બાસ જિંદા છે એ જોય છે સકીના કે અલમ આવ્યા રાખે છે આવ્યા રાખે છે રિવાયતમાં મળે છે કે જયારે ત્રીજા ઝાડ પાસે પહોંચે છે તો એક લઈન જે છે એના પાસે એક ગુર્જ છે ગુર્જ એટલે કે એક ઓલો આપણે હેમર કેવું કહીએ એવી જાતનું એક લોકાનું હથિયાર હતું કે જે ઈમા જે મોલા અબ્બાસ ના માથામાં મારે છે કે જેનાથી મોલા અબ્બાસ નું જે બેલેન્સ જે છે એ ફરી જાય છે અને એ જમીન ઉપર આવે છે અને જ્યારે અમુલ બનીન 
જન્નતુલ બકીમાં રિવાયતમાં મળે છે કે જ્યારે મેમુલ બની જન્નતુલ બકીમાં એમની માં જતા હતા તો ચાર નાની નાની રીટી કરતા હતા કે તથા આ મારો અબ્બાસ છે આ મારો જાફર છે આ મારો અબ્દુલ્લા છે આ મારો ઉસ્માન છે પછી બીજી મોટી લકીર કરીને કહેતા હતા આ મારો હુસૈન છે અને કે હું હુસૈન ઉપર રોઈશ કારણ કે એની માં જિંદા નથી પણ રોતા રોતા પછી કહેતા હતા કે અબ્બાસ અબ્બાસ મને એ વિચાર થાય છે કે જ્યારે તારા હાથ ન હતા અને ત્યારે ગોરામાંથી તું જમીનમાં આવે આવતા હતા ત્યારે જ્યારે ઇન્સાનનો દસ્તુર છે કે જ્યારે કોઈ ઊંચાઈથી નીચા ઉપર ફરે છે તો પહેલો પોતાના હાથના સહારાથી લે છે કે અબ્બાસ તારી હાલત શું થઈ હશે તારી હાલત શું થઈ હશે ત્યારે પછી અબ્બાસ જમીન ઉપર આવે છે અને ઇમામને પુકારે છે ઇમામ જાય છે અબ્બાસની હાલત જોઈ છે જેને બાકી અબ્બાસ કહે છે કે આ તીર છે મારી આંખમાં એને કાઢીને લોહીને કાઢો કે જેનાથી હું તમારી છેલ્લી નજર કરી શકું હસી થાય છે અને એમની રૂહ જન્નતમાં પરવાસ કરે છે ઇમામ હુસૈન અલી સલામ વિચાર કરે છે કે શું કરે પણ એમને હજરત અબ્બાસની વસીયત યાદ આવે છે કે પણ મારી આ જે છે લાશ ને પાછા ખૈમામની તરફ નહીં લઈ જાતા પણ દુશ્મનોએ એટલું એટલા એનો ઉપર ઝુલમ કર્યો રિવાયતમાં ભરે છે કે જ્યારે અરબહીનનો વખત આવે છે અને કાફેલો શ્યામથી પાછો કરબલા તરફ આવે છે જેના બે ઝૈનબ અલેહ સલામ પોતે સવારી માંથી પોતે પોતાને જમીન ઉપર પછાડે છે અને ગુથનીઓ ઘસરતા ઘસરતા ઇમામ હુસૈન અલી સલામ ની કબર ઉપર પોચે છે અને રડે છે અને પછી ઉઠે છે અને કે છે કે એ ઝૈનુલ આબીદીન એ બેટા મને તું લઈ જા અબ્બાસ ની કબર માં અબ્બાસ ક્યાં છે તો એને હાથ પકડીને લઈ જાય છે અને એ કબર ઉપર બેસારે છે અને રિવાયતમાં મળે છે કે अब्बास खबर अब्बास खबर अब्बास न कद तो बहुत मोटू मोटी खबर हो तो कोई बारक ना बच्चा न खबर लगे ત્યારે ઇમામ ઝૈન લાભીદીન કહે છે કે અશક્યાઓ એની હાલત એવી કરી નાખી હતી કટકા કટકા કરી નાખ્યા હતા કે આપણે પોટલી માફક કહે છે કે એની અંદર મને દફનાવવામાં આપણે ભાઈલા દુઆ કરીએ અલ્લાહ પાક પાસે કે હજરત અબ્બાસ ની શુચાત અલ્લાહ આપણને પણ એ નસીબ કરે અને એવી સુચા આવે કે જે રીતના તેઓ ઇમામના હામી થઈ ગયા હતા તેઓ અમે પણ ઇમામના હામી થઈ જાય અને આપણે જે છે ઇમામના જે પ્રિન્સિપલ્સ છે એ આપણે જિંદગીમાં અપનાવીએ કે જેનાથી આપણે હુસૈની કયામતના દિવસે શોક અને શાંતિ કહી શકીએ કે અમે હુસૈની હતા કે ન ખાલી અમે હાથથી માતમ કર્યું પણ અમને દિલથી પણ માતમ કર્યું આપણા મગજથી એ માતમ કર્યું અને તમારી અઝાદારી જે છે અમે મરી ગયા ત્યાર સુધી એવી રીતના અઝાદારી કરી કે જેનાથી ઇમામ હુસેન તમારા પ્રિન્સિપલ જે તમે રાખી ગયા હતા એનાથી અમે કદી દૂર ન થઈ ગયા